for you guys here let's talk a little bit about the slice now the slice backhand there's already two video clips on the slice that we put in a little not too long ago and this is the third one and I think it's a very important one I've gotten a couple emails recently from clients that say hey I really like what uh you know the idea of not breaking the, the the table there the glass table and carrying a stroke forward like this but I see Roger Federer doing it like this on TV not just him, a couple other players, once in a while I see this cutting down slice, you know. From the back view there, instead of looking like this, it looks more like this, right? Usually it's a company with, you know, the player actually going on his tiptoe here a little bit even. Why? Why? Because he's catching that ball on the rise, guys. Plus, he's dealing with a heavy topspin, a heavy deep shot from another pro on the other side. He's not dealing with your regular 3 0 3 5 club player shot when he hits that cutting down slice. Because cutting down on a slice against a mushy slow ball or a wide low ball that you're going to try and dig and save doesn't work. Cutting down on a slice works very well. Power to you, go out there and do it. If you're dealing with the ball heavy, you know, with pace, and you're going to take it on the rise. If you're going to take the ball coming up, Yes, cutting down on a slice works, you can clear the net. But if the ball is already bounced, came up, and it's on its way down, and you cut down on it, that ball's not even going to clear the net. You can go out there and try it. So, it's important to understand here, when I talk about following through this way, on the slice, and not like this, it's not for, you know, for you to chip a drop shot, or cut a tight angle like Roger does to bring your opponent into the net. We're talking about hitting a deep, penetrating, low, skidding slice. And that one, you need to do this follow through. Okay, I don't have anybody to feed me balls here now to give me a heavy ball so I can demonstrate a cutting down one. But I can show you that when the ball is dropping down like this is when you need to do the follow through going up. Let's say here, I'm going to shoot for hitting the ball down the line there now. Look how my swing path goes down the line. Along that bench. And that's how I get accurate with it. See? Lower now. Okay, guys? If you're going to cut down on it, you make sure you're taking the ball on the rise. Or it won't work. The correct slice follow through is this. I actually just saw... In Shanghai, I was watching a little bit that semifinal with Roger and uh, Murray. And a few times I did see Roger in trouble slice this way and bring the follow through up. So even Roger himself, who does this on the rise cut to bring the guys in, knows how to do this one. Okay, guys? All right, here we go. Cheers. Go out there. Do your slice the right way. Don't get a tan, you get caught up in trying to do things that the pros do all the time. Because a lot of things that the pros do is against the shot that they're having to handle, which is coming from another pro. It makes sense, doesn't it? Pretty logical to me. All right. Cheers. One more time, it's a wrap. I'll see you guys next time. Go out there, add the slice to your game. Excellent new gear to have. Good variation, change pace. Good to go save low balls. And once again, when you do it, follow through upwards and out towards the target. If you're hitting a you know, slower or a lower ball, and if you're taking the ball on the rise with a lot of pace, yes, then you can cut down on it a little bit more, and you'll still get the ball to clear the net. But you're not going to get the same depth penetration. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter ball. All right, guys? Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. Bye.